All right, we're here at my outdoor worm bin and we are gonna try another experiment, one that I've been wanting to do for a while, and that is frozen versus chopped up. And wow, we're already jumping into a lot of worms right here. Last time we were in here, we declared the pumpkin the winner out of the watermelon pumpkin challenge and the watermelon really hadn't been gotten much into and it looks like they kind of took care of business now. I'm seeing some of the watermelon peel, but nothing, nothing of the rinds or anything like that, which was quite a difference from last time. And we did also feed last time. We fed an apple and some arugula and banana, that kind of thing. So we'll see if there's any of that in here. And this is from a tea bag. I started putting tea bags in there on the advice of a commenter. So let's just kind of dig through here and and see what we've got and kind of aerate it and what we've got is just tons of worms as you look through here i wouldn't be surprised if there was any whole food and we found a worm ball but we'll keep looking but really good amounts of worms looks like all throughout so let's keep digging really happy with what i'm seeing here got some of the uh little keurig paper filters that i used for a little bit we'll kind of dig underneath it's it's a lot deeper than it's been in the past, and <laughs> you might have seen a frog jump out. Occasionally, I'll get little baby frogs in here, maybe trying to snack on some worms. Always try and shoo them out, but again, just really good, good castings, good amount of bedding. In fact, it's it can use more. It always can use more, but um, I'm just happy with what I'm seeing here. This is part of the mango seed. Um, it is going to slow. This is going to be a, a long time for it to to totally decay, but um, and for them to eat it all. But that is the mango seed we keep updating. So let me just dig around, and then we'll get into the heart of the experiment. Wow, just worms everywhere, and this the moisture level is fantastic. It's been raining the last few days. Here is a here is a grape stem. <laughs> There's a little worm tangled up in there. We'll just keep digging around in the paper. I put some solid pieces of newspaper. I don't see those. I think this is this right here is actually the pine cone. It's shrinking every time we come in here. So that's good. Just keep digging around. I'm almost through everything. Again, a little bit of um, watermelon peel, but nothing to really write home about. The paper. I think we've already run into that. But yeah, just lots of lots of worms all throughout. They're just they're just uh, really doing well in here. This population is doing fantastic, and I estimate it to be somewhere around three thousand worms, I believe. Always going to see some banana left. This is the stem of the banana, and some of the peel with some of the banana intact. And I don't know if you can see, but in through there's lots of worms, and they're probably going all up in through there. But I think that will about do it. Here is a newer mango seed, not quite ready to be kind of broken open. Oh, and a, another newer mango seed. And you can see the first thing they do is eat apart the fibers that I haven't been able to strip off to eat. So they're still working on the fibers on this one. But let's go ahead and set up the feeding zone here. And I'm really excited about this because there's two main ways that people kind of prep their food scraps if they don't just throw them in raw and one is to freeze them and that's pretty easy if you remember just throw it in the freezer certainly a couple nights maybe or a night before you're going to feed your worms or just store them in your freezer and then when you feed them the frozenness or the cold temperatures or the freezing temperatures break down the cell wall of the plant that you um of your food scraps and the worms are able to get in there quicker and it's able to decompose quicker. Just wanna make sure I get a good hole in here. And then if you chop up your food, then you're increasing the surface area, more chances for them to attack it and the microbes to attack um, the food scraps. So they too help it to go by faster. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do frozen versus chopped. This is cabbage. Here's one quarter, here's the other quarter. It was a half, I cut it in half and you can see the, the frozen one is kind of bulging here and that's because water expands. 
but this is actually the same cabbage that we did another experiment in. I just kept it in the refrigerator until I had time to do this one. So I'm really excited to see how this is gonna go. Frozen versus chopped. So let's set the scene here. We're gonna put down some cardboard as our bedding. And I actually need to kind of create some space in here so that they're separated. And right here is the critter hole. So that's gonna be where we're gonna put one of them and we're gonna remember which one it is. So when we come in here, we know what we're looking at. We'll go frozen away from the critter hole right here. And we're gonna go chopped towards the critter hole. Whoop, a little worm one to come out on the bowl. And we'll put all the chopped in there. So chopped versus frozen. This, this should be neat, which one goes first? Now, obviously, if you can chop it and then freeze it, that would be ideal, that would be the ultimate. But for this experiment, we're gonna see which one is the best one for putting it in if you had to do one or the other. We're gonna add more bedding. And because this is the only food in here, besides a little bit of the food scraps that you saw, then this experiment should go pretty fast. And I'm going to check on it in at least five days so I know how we're doing with it. So let's put a little bit more bedding in. And then we'll do our normal coffee grounds. And we'll also do our grit, which is just pulverized eggshell. And from there, we're just gonna bury it up. So in the comments, please tell me what you think is gonna go first. Is it gonna be the frozen cabbage? Is it gonna be the chopped cabbage? Knowing that they're the exact same mass, each one is a quarter cabbage. And if you like what you see here in the experiment, go ahead and hit the like button, I appreciate it. And you can subscribe to my channel where you can see the previous experiments I've done in this bin, but I also have two other bins. And there are three playlists for each of my three bins and you can watch from start to finish castings. But I think this is gonna be a pretty, pretty interesting experiment, especially if you're already a worm farmer or have already have some bins and you're kind of <laughs> wondering about that, you know, frozen versus chopped. But I think, I think we're, we've got a good setup here. I am gonna put a little bit more bedding on top. And I'll actually put a link right about here for the previous cabbage experiment we did because that was a, that was a pretty good one, raw versus frozen. I enjoyed that one and hope you do too. So hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting everybody. Take care now.